right, guys, good morning. It's Friday the 27th, and we have made it through our first full week of remote learning. I want to thank you guys for being so patient. I know that some of the videos haven't always been perfect. I know it's been delayed in getting up. It's been a learning process for me as well. I'm hoping that I'm getting the hang of this. Um, I'm hoping that the activities that need to happen um, for the next week will be a little bit easier. Next week, we will transition to social studies. So again, something new, and I apologize for that, but I don't want to stop doing social studies. Um, we're going to try to do some really cool things like some virtual tours. Um, we are going to continue to, to look at the 13 colonies in the beginning of early American life um, and how we became, become a country. Um, so bear with me as we still learn something new for next week, but, um, congratulations on getting this done. Uh, and I want to thank you guys for all your efforts this week, um, your diligence to stay with it. People have been great about asking questions or, Hey, Mrs. Hickey, the video cut out. It didn't get there. Or what's the question? So I apologize, but hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll get it squared away. On that note, if you guys have any questions, please reach out to me, um, to either through Google Classroom, um, whether it's you want to FaceTime uh, through Google Meet with me and talk so we can walk it through. Um, I'm going to put out a document today that talks about who um, who hasn't done all the work for the week. Um, so if you are unsure whether or not you have all your work in, um, you can reach out to me um, directly if you want to ask that question or if you're patient and you want to wait till the document opens up this weekend um, or today, let me know. Um, you know, guys, I want to just one quick note. Uh, well, I'll talk about that in another video. Anyway, here's where we are for today. So yesterday, um, we looked at the balloon, and hopefully you got to see. If not, I will try to repost it. But the balloon um, didn't weigh the same. So we put two balloons on each end of the stick, and when we let the air out of one balloon, or all the balloons on one side, the balloons went down. So we saw that we know air weighs something. And we talked about what is happening. Uh, so we know that air and water are what give um, Old Sherman the, the energy and the, uh, the materials to grow. So today we wanna go back and talk a little bit more about matter. Um, and we started to talk about that. Matter is something that has uh, volume and takes up, uh, has, takes up space and has weight. So two things. Um, we're going to look at this today, and one of the things we want to look at is um, where does it go? How does it transform from one thing and go to another thing? So we start today um, with Mystery Doug's activity, and um, one of the things that I did was instead of playing Mystery Doug, I wanted to go through and, and actually do a little bit myself. So I was going for a walk yesterday, and I videoed something, and I want to share that with you for today. So let's look at that. So, you know, you can see that there's, in our in our little backyard, there's leaves everywhere that it's, you know, they fall off the trees. You know, if you look at the trees, they're pretty empty. Um, you know, there's not a lot there. But, you know, soon they'll be growing their buds. But all these leaves have come to the ground. Um, you can see, you know, there's, there's leaf sort of whole ones from this fall. You know, but I kind of sort of dug up under the ground a little bit and sort of got underneath. You know, what... What I can see is something um, pretty cool. Like, I can see that here is what was a leaf. You know, so what happened to this leaf? Where did it go? Um, why are, you know, are there just piles and piles of leaves sitting here from the last hundred years? Or does something happen to them to make this pile continue to stay low? You know, does it, is it just, 50 years and hundreds and hundreds of years of at least or is there more or have they sort of gone away somewhere and we all kind of know they're kind of going away so where do they go you know that's the story for today that's the um question of what that we're going to look at today you know where is what is happening to this leaf why does it go from you know here to here and then you know even further to here so, you know, we, we want to explore that. That's what we're going to look at today. Um, and uh, you'll see in the next part of the video, it's, um, we're going to go on to Mystery Doug and, and take a look at something. So, more to come. Say hi, Boo Boo. Bailey. Boo Boo Bear. Show the kids. How do you sit?
Oh, that's a pretty. Oh, that's a pretty girl set. Yeah, that's a pretty girl set. She got paw. Paw. Oh, that's a pretty girl. All right, there's your teeth. Give everybody kisses. Okay, so <clears throat> obviously you know I love my boo boo bear. So I thought I she was we were going for a walk yesterday and just wanted to share that with you. So um, here's obviously a guy going for a walk, and so let's sort of see what's going on with him. Here's a sped up video showing a leaf after it's fallen to the forest floor. In everyday language, we would say this leaf is rotting. It's there, and over time it breaks down. But when scientists looked more carefully at rotting leaves, they realized a leaf doesn't just somehow break down or rot all on its own. All right, just making sure it's still here. Um, so we saw this a little bit on the video yesterday, or on my video here, we saw a little bit of that rotting. So let's take, keep going. There's something that grows on it, something that's doing the breaking down. It's this stuff. White colored strings or threads that start to grow on the fallen leaves. What are those things? Scientists have discovered that if you look closely at the soil on the forest floor, especially if you dig into it, you can almost always find these white threads growing all over the place. They even move around very slowly, as you can see in this sped up video. They seem kind of alien, until you watch what they can do after it rains. Now this is a patch of forest floor where there's lots of these white threads growing in the soil. And now watch what happens if we show it in a sped up video after it's been raining. Ready? Here we go. Oh, you see that thing? Here's a view of it from the side. Do you recognize these? Watch what happens. They're mushrooms popping up. So those little white threads we saw, they're the roots of mushrooms. Here's a diagram to help you visualize it. Mushroom roots are spread out within the soil all around the forest floor. Only after it's been raining do the mushroom roots send up the mushrooms themselves. But the mushroom roots are there in the soil the whole time living a secret life. What scientists discovered about mushroom roots is that they poke out from the forest floor and surround dead plant leaves, touching them on all sides. As they do this, the mushroom roots let a liquid flow out, which starts breaking the leaf apart or decomposing it. Mushrooms are what we call decomposers, meaning they break dead things apart. Some of that leaf, they suck back in and digest. It's what they eat but some of it they leave behind as a blackish brown material. That's what soil is, or the less formal word for that is dirt, the stuff that plants grow in. This is hard to see, so let me show you what happens to a bunch of dead leaves in another sped up video. Let's watch. Here you can see the mushroom roots are growing, and at the end of two weeks, look, the leaves have turned into soil. So that's why we don't see leaves on the forest floor. Mushroom roots eat and digest part of the leaves, breaking them up and turning what's left into soil. And there's not just one kind of mushroom. There are all different kinds of mushrooms. They come in many different colors. They come in different shapes. They come in different sizes. Yikes, this one's that's huge. huge. And it's not just leaves that the mushroom roots will break apart and eat. Yes, some types of mushrooms have roots that eat leaves. But... Other kinds of mushrooms like to eat dead wood, so you'll see them growing on fallen logs like these here. Some mushrooms even decompose the bodies of animals, like these little mushrooms, which are decomposing the body of a dead grasshopper. Oh, that's so cool. So mushrooms have these little roots growing everywhere on the forest floor, which go around eating and breaking apart leaves and any dead stuff, like fallen trees. What they leave behind becomes soil. Oh, think about that. If there were no mushrooms, imagine what the world would look like. Without mushrooms, all the dead leaves really would pile up like this. The world around us would be piled high in fallen trees and dead leaves and dead animals. You wouldn't even be able to walk around. There'd be no decomposition happening, no breaking apart of those things into smaller pieces. In fact, everything under your feet, almost all the soil that you walk over every day, 
used to be plants and animals that are now decomposed. So say a thank you to the next mushroom you see. Its roots decompose dead plants and leaves, breaking it down into smaller pieces. And just as important, that becomes the soil that all the plants around us can grow in. So far, we've just been talking about mushrooms decomposing dead plants and animals on the forest floor. But there's something in your home that decomposes if you leave it out. Your food. All food comes from plants and animals. If you leave food sitting out, it decomposes too. What's going on? Your food isn't sitting on the forest floor where mushroom roots can get to it. So why does it decompose? So just <clears throat> thinking through that, you know, how many of you have had bananas been sitting on your countertop and all of a sudden, yikes, they're no longer good. They're black and they're squishy and they're kind of gross. Um, just before they get to the gross parts when you make banana bread. But, um, you know, certainly we know that your foods start to d break down. They're no longer fresh. Um, strawberries are a big one that if you are have them in your refrigerator, they don't seem to last for a very long time. So definitely, um, we know that foods are starting to decompose. Um, but why? Why does that happen? Why don't they stay fresh any longer? So um, let's go through the video a little bit more and see what's going on. I'll move Boo Boo off a little bit here, even though she's super cute. All right. Why is it that if you leave food sitting out for a while, it starts to decompose, like this loaf of bread or this strawberry? All of our food comes from either plants or animals. But since your food's sitting on a counter, and not the forest floor, you'd assume there aren't any mushroom roots that can get into your house and decompose your food. So what is this stuff growing on your food as it rots? You probably know it's called mold. But right. you might not have known this. Take a closer look at it. Here's a close-up view of some mold growing on a vegetable. You see that? What's it look like? Looks like mushroom roots a bit, doesn't it? Yep. Look even closer under a microscope, and you'll see this. Oh. See these little things here? They even resemble mushrooms, just microscopic ones. Mm -hmm. That's because they are mushrooms. Mold is a type of mushroom that grows really well in your house. It's just a really tiny microscopic mushroom. When talking about both mold and ordinary mushrooms, scientists like to use a different word for the whole category of the two of them together, mold and mushrooms. Together they call them fungi, which comes from the Latin word for mushroom. It seems crazy to think there might be tiny mushrooms that can get into your house, but scientists have discovered that floating all around your house are little seeds of these mold mushrooms. They call them spores, and they find them everywhere. You won't even notice these seeds without a microscope. And there's really nothing you can do about them. They're so small that they float around in the air. You've been surrounded by them your whole life. So when you leave food sitting out for too long, like in this sped up video, eventually those mushroom seeds will land on it and start to grow mushroom roots. And as they do that, they're breaking it apart or decomposing it. Just the same as if these berries were on the forest floor. If you wait long enough, you'll come back and have a little tiny pile of soil where the berries once were. This is the same idea behind composting. Instead of throwing grass clippings or food scraps in the garbage, some people like to put it in a big pile in their yard, where then mushroom roots can decompose it and help transform it to soil. See, check out this compost bin that's been cut in half so that you can see what happens inside it. At the top of the bin, you can see food that someone threw away really so I don't know if anybody has ever um, done a, de uh, a, de a de composting um, bin or not, but basically you put your food in and you make sure there's air getting in there. Um, you want to make sure that there's air, but there's no way for animals to get in. But if you can see things are going in at the top, it does need to be kind of turned a little bit. But by the time it gets to the bottom, you've got this very nutrient heavy, nutrient rich, rich soil. Um, and so for people who are gardeners, this is what they're doing with their, basically they're, they're speeding up the process so that they can ensure that they get to capture that soil that comes from that decomposition. Really recently, at the top is the newer things, but the food at the bottom of the bin has been sitting there for a long time. It doesn't even look like food anymore. Mushroom roots have turned it into soil. 
which someone can then go use in their garden to grow new plants. So someone wanted the food they threw in this bin to rot and turn into soil. But with most foods that we buy, we don't want them to decompose quickly. We want them to stay fresh on the grocery store shelves and stay fresh after we buy them so that we've got time before we have to eat them. Because we don't want our food to decompose quickly, we've come up with ways to fight the decomposers, to keep the mold, the little mushrooms, from starting to grow so quickly. Decomposers are living things too, and they have needs. And if those needs aren't met, they won't be able to live and decompose our food. For example, you know we keep a lot of our food in a refrigerator or in a freezer. So cold temperatures must have something to do with stopping mold from growing. Of course, 100 years ago, people didn't have refrigerators. What did people used to do to keep food from decomposing? What are some other things that affect how well mold grows? Like, for example, say you were going to go camping for two weeks without a refrigerator, and you wanted to bring some food along, like some sliced oranges. What might you do to keep the oranges from decomposing? So that's a good question for today. What are you going to do to keep those oranges from decomposing? Um, talk to somebody in your house. Think about it. Strat make a little list, um, and we're going to talk about what you're going to do with your activity at the end of this. In today's activity, you're going to make a mold terrarium, a sealed off container where you can purposely let mold grow on food for several days. Your goal is to run an experiment and find out what conditions help mold to grow and what conditions stop mold from growing. You probably know that if you leave food out at room temperature, mold will start growing just fine. So you'll want at least one mold terrarium just like this. We'll call it the basic mold terrarium. But you'll also want to make a few more mold terrariums so that you can experiment to figure out what conditions make mold grow better and what conditions stop mold from growing. To figure that out, you'll want to try some different growing conditions for your mold plates. So you'll work as a small team to make a mold terrarium that's different from the basic terrarium in just one way. Your team will decide what one condition you want to change about your terrarium and then see what happens. Okay, so here's your activity for the day, for the for this week. Um, and I really would like to, this ex to explore over the weekend. You guys are home. This is a great opportunity. So I want for you to find something in your home that your parents are willing to let you leave out on the counter. You don't need to make a tray where you have more than one of them. You just need to make one thing. So whether it's a strawberry or an apple or a banana or a piece of bread, one thing that you can leave out on the counter and um, let just sort of make it space. Um, we are going to make some observations about this. You can see this is being set up for a fair test, right? Only letting one thing change. But we know that we don't have that opportunity at home. And I can't ask <clears throat> all of you to do that. So, But I can ask you to take one thing in your home that you'd be willing to let decompose. So <clears throat> we're going to kind of speed through this for a example, little bit. You might be curious about what happens if the mold terrarium were to be kept somewhere really warm. So you put it by a heater. This mold terrarium would be just like the basic terrarium. Yeah, we're going to skip through that for a second. So get these handouts. Um, You'll get more supplies later. But first you need to make a plan. When you're done with this step, click the arrow on the right. So I'm going to end this video and we're going to start another one. The, the, next, the next video really is going to be the instructions about what you need to do for the next couple of days and how you're going to be accountable for today. So, you know, the one thing with science is that it's great to look at. It's great to watch a video and to see, but I really want for you to find this for yourself. So I'm going to end this here. Um, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to start another video and allow that explains your homework assignment for today. So this is the end of the video for your um, lesson for today. And stay tuned for the next video, which will have your homework in it. Thanks. Uh -huh.